Today we will see how to install and deploy a FortiSore secure message exchange. So this is a message router which is used uh, to link the uh, tenants, the remote tenants, uh, whether it's an agent or a proper uh, remote uh, FortiSore uh, regional SOC or a dedicated tenant instance and the main instance in the um, in the uh, data center. So basically we need a machine with a minimum of these specs. So four CPUs, eight gigs of RAM and a hundred gig of, uh, of uh, storage or preferably with eight CPU and 16 gigs uh, of RAM as a recommended um, specification. Now, first we start by uh, downloading the installation uh, binary, right? And then we just run the installation right away. And here it asks us whether we are deploying a full-fledged FortiSore instance or a secure message uh, exchange. So it's the latter in our case. It will take some time uh, to install, so we'll fast forward. So the next time we connect, we are presented with the configuration wizard. So we click OK. We give it a, uh, a, uh, an FQDN, preferably. Um, it will help us uh, to have an internal DNS server. So we give it a proper uh, FQDN. Otherwise, we can just go with uh, any uh, username, any host name. And then we uh, will uh, we'll show how to, um, how to tackle that particular uh, use case. All right, DNS server. So we can choose any DNS server, username, and then uh, the password. This username is actually the username of the application layer. It's not the SSH or the uh, system uh, username on that particular uh, VM. So we can give it um, a password. Uh, we can leave the ports uh, as default, or you can change them according to uh, your environment. Then we click OK, and then we proceed with the installation. Once the installation completed, um, the system will disconnect, and then we can reconnect to have a regular shell prompt. One last thing to check before we jump to the FortiSore web interface is to review the host name. So we have two cases, either a, an FQDN resolvable in the internal or external DNS. This is not the case. In our case, it's just a, a host name uh, that we would need to define in FortiSore in order to be resolvable and um, to give FortiSore access to this particular machine through the host name. So first of all, Let's check which uh, let's check which uh, host name was used uh, in the configuration. All right. Uh, the host name is actually defined as the CN for the current installation uh, certificate. So it's FortiSore dash router one. We just need to make sure that this host name is resolvable by forty. So, so we'll just connect to we'll just connect to uh, FortiSore. All right. And we need to make sure that this host name is defined in hosts, as you can see here. So FortiSore will know how to resolve this name. And by this, we are ready to jump to the FortiSor web interface. Okay, we browse to settings, we go to secure message exchange, and we create our new router right here. So we give it a name. It was uh, FortiSor router one, right? This is where we put the FQDN in the case where we have DNS server or the host name, uh, which is what we used in, in this case for the purpose of this video as well. Um, 
so it's 40 sore router one we keep the api port as is we haven't modified it during the uh, configuration wizard and the same thing for tcp port we use the same password that we used in the configuration and the certificate is actually the ca which signed the certificates for the uh, current router so we can fetch it from the cli So we copy the certificate and we paste it right here. And then we click on create. And that's how the router uh, pop up in the, uh, in the list. And we have to make sure that the status is configured. All right.